Hello, this is Jerry Mitchell, and we are back with another episode of the Libertarian Uncensored Podcast, going over all the posts on the Libertarian Uncensored subreddit. First, we have federal shipping regulations sank one of America's biggest offshore wind projects from Reason.com by 2000 Time of Charm, and I definitely would agree that that's not good. You know, we shouldn't have regulations making it too hard to do business all the time. And that's what the government seems to want, though. They always seem to want to make it it's hard to do, uh, do, do, do all these projects because there's always so much red tape to get around. And that's why no one wants to do anything anymore, it seems. Because there's too much, too many rules. Then we have school choice can promote evasive entrepreneurs from ire.com. Or dire.org, and that's never my 2000 time of charm. And I definitely would agree that, you know, school choice and government regulations uh, are. Well, we need we need school choice to get. There's too many. The public schools were too overly regulated. And I think that's something that, you know, people shouldn't be forced to go to school somewhere if they don't want to send their kids to school or go to school somewhere if they don't want to, I think. And that's my thought about that issue. Then we have Free Principles for Libertarians in Times of War from Patrick Carroll on FAE.org, but another one from 2000 Time of Charm. And I definitely agree we should, you know, being more, um, uh, uh, you know, anti war. And, um, yeah, right now everyone seems to be pro-war in regards to Ukraine or Israel, or at least one of them, it seems. And I like what 2000 Tower Charms do. If you're not with us, you're with the enemy. And they always use that. They always say, oh, you're with the officers, you're with the enemy, you're with Putin. You're not with us, you're with, uh, Hamas. You're not with us, you're with the terrorists. You know, it's all, it's all the same thing. You know, it's just, it's bullying you to get the support of war. And we shouldn't be, I personally don't think you should be supporting war regardless of which two, which two sides are competing in it. So that's my thought there. Then we have Newsweek names the pop singer person of the year. F no narcissist. How can I say something about this? Both racist and insane from Spike Cohen on Twitter. It's actually time you named time to our other person of the year. But, um, he quote tweeted, uh, Sarah, Sarah Rao, who said, the white American woman billionaire was, who could end the genocide of Palestine it's in one, one Instagram post of the time person of the year, white nonsense, white violence, white love of black and brown genocide. And I said, identity politics is a hell of a drug. This is an anti-racism expert because that's the world we live in. And I linked to a story from Newsweek, she said, about her, her a story that Sarah Rao wrote, she said, well, I'm teaching white women not to be racist Karens. Well, you know, I think... Some people, a lot of people like her need to start with themselves when it comes to not being a racist, I would say. But that's just my thoughts on the issue. Then we have report content that violates deal in terms of service from knee concussions. And they said, this suburb is not a cage match. That we do not censor ideas, ideology to individuals. We are forced to moderate to Reddit standards. This means following the Reddit content policy. The rules which are based on the sidebar of the subreddit don't like it. Them the breaks. We're under the watchful eye of Mother Reddit, and we must follow their rules. This burns your burns your bruns. Remember that we are basically squires on Reddit's private property. And I said, um, if people want to report, they should be able to do to. But I personally don't because I think it's too authoritarian in regards to censorship. I think in my whole eight plus year Reddit history, I've only done about four or five reports at most. Then we have Congress should encourage college presidents to censor even more speech from Reason.com by 2000 Time of Charm. And I said, uh, ag- agreed, we need to support free speech. So called conservatives suddenly become woke it ball types when Israel is brought up, though. Then we have this suburb's not left living up to its name. And I posted that. And I said, I said, our friend you slash comrade Proton appears to have been banned and they wanted me to share this message. 
It's a sad, it is a sad day when the moderators of the supposedly uncensored subreddit have become more authoritarian, hypocritical, and subreddits that sub usually scapegoats. And today I must sadly share that I have been banned for making fun of certain people here sad violent. I am sure the mods who will claim that they broke site wide rules, but it's clear to any reasonable person that they that they are intentionally performing mental gymnastics to stretch the definition of royals to ban whoever they see fit. For example, it's considered spam to defend myself from repeated accusations of trolling, but those repeated accusations themselves are not considered spam. I could go on and on, but the mods are just going to conjure up some weak excuse anyway, so why bother? This was not really unexpected, as most people in sub who complain about censorship only care when it is their side that's being censored. But I had hoped you would put up this facade a little longer. Don't worry, though. Nobody will bother you anymore. Nobody shall ever dare post studies or, or science that goes against your views again. Those damn fascists that are interrupting your racist boot looking. I'm sorry for ruining your circle trip, but I will stop now. Enjoy yourselves. And then he shared some, and then Connor put on out. And I said, um... What did I say? I said... I personally do think they tend to be more on the circle jerky side, but I've always supported uh, free speech, even when speech that I don't care for. You can't censor people for trolling, circle jerking, or spam. They are just extensions of hate speech or misinformation when it comes to being ultimately subjective and being used by those in positions of power to start removing anything they don't like. A pair, and then the concussions com, uh, said, uh, said in their comment, he was advocating for raping his comments, and I added... Um, what did I say? I said something there. Um, I think I said, I said, I personally, I don't care for fresh either, but they still fall under free speech, even if the mods or admins don't like it. Then we have knee concussions who step down for banning people from Bob W. McGrath, who said, who said, UW knee, con- slightly just knee concussions to step up down as a mod for banning people and t- taking, talking po- post, I don't know, clear, clear, and everyone gets some trouble. He just doesn't like them personally. Edit. He says he didn't take the post about the man down, so whatever, whoever did that should also get the fuck out. And I, I, I said, compared to a lot of other Reddit mods, I don't think the ones he on the subreddit are that bad by comparison, but I definitely hold the subreddit to a bit of a higher standard since brands itself is uncensored. Then we have good answer from Vivek. Fraudsters, terrorists, and criminals already use the legitimate financial system. Just because some people use Bitcoin for that purpose, there's no good reason to ban it from Sagar and Jetty on Twitter. I posted that and I said, the biggest one, of course, being the U.S. government when it comes to the criminals, fraudsters, and terrorists. You know, that's they're always using they're always only always using the legitimate financial system. So that just goes to show you that's you know the legitimate the legitimate financial system might be illegitimate when because you know the government just prints money. And there's no one to hold them accountable for how much they print or what or why they print so much. That's my thoughts there. Then we have last night this man used his primetime opportunity on national television to spread the anti Semitic, anti immigrant, great replacement conspiracy theory from Josh Eagle on Twitter, and I posted that and I said I was about to be cross when I said um, I said, I said, I, I think the term great replacement was a bit much, but I do think you should be able to ask why the demographics of the Western world are changing as rapidly as they are without being shut down as a bigot for it. You know, I personally am very pro immigrants, you know, I work with a few of them, but it's important to always consider what the pros and cons of everything are, you know, like, you know, like, uh, we ground now using white and his child immigrants himself, I believe. By rapidly changing demographics, we can look not, not race, but rather how integrated into culture the new demographic is. Increasingly, people aren't allowed to question anything when it comes to immigrants, and people just try to do whatever they want like that in that gang rape thread I shared recently. I'm pro-immigration. It's easy. It's given the U.S. many great minds like Justin Mosh, but there is a point where you have to ask yourself if too much of it is good for the social fabric of the United States as a whole. Then we have... Former police chief sentenced to 11 years in prison for conspiracy to bring weapons on January 6th from WUSA9.com by Kage blah blah blah. And, um, I personally think, um, uh, you know, you shouldn't have done this, but you probably shouldn't have done that. But, you know, I just definitely think it was kind of a false flag, you know, like, as Sam Slate says here, and Ray F. Scott 500 fine. And less than a year in prison. And, and, and I, I said, he would have, ha, he would, and then when Lee which is bullshit, should have gotten more time. He said, I said, I said, I would not say he would if he wasn't a Fed, because you know, the thing was, this was probably like, this was, January 6th is probably federal entrapment to control the narrative regarding, uh, you know, 
You know, so, so you can't question the Democrats because they're fighting for democracy. Meanwhile, the Republicans, they say, oh, they're trying to go for democracy, but they don't care. You know, if the, if the Dems did, the, the, you know, it, uh, the thing of January 6th is, oh, if, the, if the sides were reversed between them and the, if the, if the groups who did them between them and the BLM riots were reversed, then suddenly the groups who think they were the worst thing ever would probably be reversed as well. So that just goes to show you, it's not really what people do, but rather which people do things that people care about. Then we have, don't excuse the hypocrisy of the university president when it comes to free speech from Reason.com. That's never run by 2,000 times a charm. And, yeah, I, I, I definitely would agree with that. You know, we shouldn't expose hypocrisy. We shouldn't be justifying as much censorship as possible because we need free speech. Even, even if they don't support it usually when it comes to, like, stuff like misgendering, I, I definitely don't think that justifies when they to support censoring people to people's discourse on the Israel-Palestine conflict as well. Then we have gas tax revenues decline as cars get more efficient. How will government pay for the roads? From Reason.com, IT files of time a charm. And um, I personally think, you know, if people want to pay for, uh, make their own roads, I think they should be able to. But um, uh, I, I don't think, I think, you know, the problem is, is that we have public roads at all. I think everyone should have maybe their own roads or... You know, just, you know, um, yeah, everyone should make their own roads or, yeah, I don't know, because, you know, the roads, I would say, that's an example of forced collectivism, because people are forced to use, use roads controlled by the state, and I don't think that's the right answer, you know, the state shouldn't be controlling our roads, or it shouldn't be controlling any of the territory, I would say, and the roads are definitely part of that, I would say. Then we have... Why Ordinary People and Enable Totalitarians, Part 1, from Iyer.org by 2000 Time of Charm. And I definitely agree, you see, you're busy meeting that a lot recently, because people, people will, do, will enable totalitarians, the narrative says to, you know, especially when it comes to the duopoly. You know, the Democrats will say, oh, I want the blue authoritarianism, and the Republicans will say, I want red authoritarianism, when in reality, they're both authoritarianism. Then we have, the evidence that you officials not only knew that Japan would strike, but openly welcome attack is overwhelming. Rumpy National, that was their tweet on Pearl Harbor. And I said, I definitely wouldn't be surprised if the U.S. government had foreknowledge of stuff like Pearl Harbor, the JFK assassination, 9-11, among other tragedies. They know that they can use them to push a narrative and distract from their own faults as much as possible. Then we have, they can definitely measure this, guys. It's super serious research. And that was... Uh, Hannah Cox on Twitter, and I posted that, and that was her response to Nikki Halley's clip of saying, uh, for every 30 minutes that someone watches TikTok every day, they become 17% more anti-Semitic, more pro-Hamas. And I said, um, people care about the narrative a lot more than they care about facts. That is the reason. It just goes to you can make up anything and call it a fact, just like Halley did in, this, in the clip. Then we have, Denmark adopts law banning burning of Koran and other holy texts from France 24. I posted that and I said, I think the libertarian perspective here is that if you own something, you should be able to do whatever you want, what you want with it, and that includes burning. I personally am not a person who likes to see books burn, but I do think it falls under free expression. Then we have anti Zionist Jewish community flying Palestinian flags in Jerusalem from International Silver One, and that's a cross post from the Palestine subreddit. And, um, yeah, it's good. I personally am more sympathetic to Palestine than Israel, I would say. But, um, I definitely think, you know, um, uh, you know, this is just kind of more on the propaganda side as well, I would say, too. When it comes to the Palestine. So that's important to remember as well. Then we have Zionists constantly claim that condemning Israel is anti-Semitic. Despite the fact that there are countless Jews that want nothing to do with the Israeli government and support the boycott, divestment, and sanctions movement against the state of Israel, from and that's a tweet from um, JVP Action on t t Twitter who said, who said, false saying that anti anti-Semitism completes all Jews to the Israeli state and endanger the communities. If it feels deadly violence and censorship against Palestinians, you're proud anti Zionist Jews. We refuse to speak communities against one another. That was Jewish Voice for Peace Action. And that was never won by Irish Silver One. And I definitely would agree, you know, just because some members of a group uh, support one thing doesn't mean all members of a group are going to support it. And, you know, that's important to remember, you know. 
if you want to equate anti-Semitism and anti-Zionism, I think you should be able to, but you know, people, I think people should be able to disagree with that narrative as well. That's my thoughts there. Then we have new anti-Semitism rules from Congress, from Clorox, and that's a cross from the Worker Strike Back subreddit. I definitely would agree that, you know, um, the, yeah, they passed that, they, they had a, uh, uh, the new fan bill says for, clearly and firmly states that anti zionism is anti Semitism, and it passed a free and 11 14 vote, 92 present. And I personally think, you know, that I don't think the government should be defining things like that, and that I think it should be up to each individual interpretation of uh, what, 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 uh, it constitutes each of those were each of those isms. Then we have self explanatory. Really, from Flimsy Al 5563, and that was a tweet from San Antonio Express News. Senator Rafael Cruz uses the preferred name Ted as an ability to use the preferred names and pronouns. And I said, I linked to the, I linked to the, I said the comment they did last time, really, on this, on this topic. I said, far right Ted Cruz linked to his comment on the Uganda LGBTQ law being wrong about them being in prison and death penalty for homosexuals. I said, mandatory naming is not libertarian, I would add as well. So that's my thoughts there. You know, I personally don't really care for Ted Cruz. I think he's pretty status, but I think it's important to remember that you know this is definitely being pushed to control and to uh, being pushed to control the narrative. And we have opinion. Mike Johnson thought the cameras were off. They weren't from MSNBC.com by Kage. Blah blah blah. And um, yeah, I personally don't think. Um, uh, you know. I probably wouldn't agree with what he has said completely, you know. Uh, but, um, yeah, he said, um, we, we, uh, we said, we will re-elect Jesus to be on the throne here again in our country. And I personally, I'm more of a Christian myself, but I personally don't think we should, we should be trying to keep church and state separate, so that's my thoughts on that issue. Because a lot of people, increasingly, they want to turn the state into the church. And that's true of both the Republicans and the Democrats, I would say. Then we have Texas AG friends, prosecutors, and emergency doctors, and emergency abortion from Warriors.com from from ZL5 and Free, and they say it seems like complete overuse, overreach and abuse of power to me. And I would agree with that, you know. I personally think, you know, you can make the argument that abortion is murder, but even then, you know, you don't want. I, I don't know if we should be justifying having the state police murder because, you know, if they start policing murder, they'll probably exceed their authority, like you could argue they're doing here. So that's my thoughts on that issue. And I think we're going to wrap up there. I'll see you guys next episode. Bye.